you guys sheets in a second. I'm going to go ahead and start. You have some sheets from last week, and uh, we didn't cover the tab. Today, we're going to be talking about tablature, uh, because it's a really cool way to learn. I think I covered this last week. All that kind of stuff that you want to learn. Okay, so um, before I go there, let's back up a minute. Is anyone... Is there anyone struggling to get this G chord down? You're struggling a little bit. Anyone else? We got one, two, three people struggling a little bit. All right. All right. It's hard, isn't it? Have you tried the D? Yeah, it was worse. It was worse. <laughs> Making forward progress. What's easier? It was easier for you? Okay, so um, I'm just going to go back and review just a couple things because I don't want anyone left behind on those chords. Um, so number one, you know, make sure that we're starting from the bottom. And you got that nice clean note, okay? Go ahead and go into that G position. Do you remember what it is? Alright, do you have a sheet? Do you need a sheet? You got a sheet or you need a sheet? You got it. All right, so, so in every chord that you're going to look up, there's going to be the challenge of, is your fingers close enough to the frets? Is the fat part of your finger in the way? Do the really cool sound. Or am I pushing hard enough? on the string, okay? So, um, you know, in a private lesson, we could sit down and like recognize all the problems. After the class, I'll leave some time for those people struggling with that G, just to look at your technique, make sure that there's something that we can do that will help you, and we'll get you going on that. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but the G is not the hardest chord we're gonna learn. So, uh, not to be the bearer of bad news, but there's the, the technique for getting all the chords that you're ever going to see and ever going to want to learn is the same. Okay, so um, don't be embarrassed or shy if you don't, if you're not getting it. If you're not getting a good clean sound, I want to know about it. Okay, and so is the staff. We're going to help you get that down. So after class, we'll have a smaller breakout session on chords because. Uh, a lot of the time when people are thinking about playing acoustic guitar, they want to they wanna play a song around the campfire. So we're going to cover that. So don't feel like I'm going to lose you behind, uh, lose, you know, leave you in the dust. So uh, the basic techniques are the same though, right? Making sure that your finger is close enough on that fret, making sure that the, the fleshy part of your finger is out of the way of the other string. And sometimes that's moving your hand in a position to where your wrist isn't strained so your fingers can get to it correctly. And if you have to hold that position, whatever that looks like, for a painful amount of time to get your hand used to it, that's just what we have to do. But, um, so every chord has that challenge. Now, for some of you with larger fingers, the tab sheet that I printed off with the chords and with many chords that you're going to see listed online or in a chord book or on Ultimate Guitar, they are assuming, this is my assumption, that you have small little fingers. Uh, they're not, you know, I'm thinking like maybe they're assuming we're teaching 10 year olds, okay? So some of you 10 year olds, you might want to use those shapes and those fingers on the chord chart. However, you know, there's some people in here with a little bit bigger fingers and they struggle on the A shape. So if you look at that chord, that sheet of those chords, you see that A shape? You see the numbers listed, two, three, four? That implies you're going to be able to stick each of your three fingers, one on each, and there's going to be enough room. Well, for some of you, we'd have to cut off half of your finger to make that work. I never play an A that way, okay? Uh, 
I bar the entire thing with my middle finger and I make it shaped like this. And actually, I, you know, I kind of, one of the things I do is I take my ring finger and I use that to push down to get that shape. Now, you know, those are tendons in there that might have to stretch a little bit. But when I play that A, I play it like that. I just bar all three. When I play the E shape, uh, I don't think the E is on there. It is. Yeah, it is. I don't play with these two fingers crammed into that little spot. To me, that's ridiculous. Okay? To some people, you have to do that. I just take my middle finger and I, I go between both of them and I hold both down with my middle finger. So that works for the E minor and the E major that's listed. You see that? So I'm, I'm bridging the gap. There's a fundamental reason. If you can do that, why I think you should do that. So for all of those shapes that you're gonna see from here on out for the rest of your life playing, like sometimes you have to use common sense. And like, well, what's easier for my hand? Okay, so in this A shape that's on the sheet that maybe some of you have tried, in this other shape, it's like, man, I can't get my fingers in there. Because I'm bridging the gap with one finger, I can do this. I can't do that the other way. I'd be like... <laughs> You've never heard that in a song. Somebody's fumbling around trying to get their fingers in like that. So. When you've heard that in music, you're rocking that hand over, right? So there's this, uh, remember what I said about the uh, body posture and the hand posture, everything working together. If you watch what I'm doing, I'm, I'm coming from this shape, but I'm just rocking down, I'm rocking back up, I'm rocking down. Now, I've done that a lot, so it's really natural. But that being said, the sheet music sometimes that you're given and the chord shapes that you see maybe is for a smaller hand to help, like, well, if I had to, what would I use? But it's not always the rule of okay? So sometimes you do what you have to do. And so uh, that's, that's a little bit of an explanation. Now, we're going to leave chords, unless there's any questions on chords at all. Just transitioning from one to another. Good question. It's the hardest part, right? Like, ah! So, to get the transition going from one chord to the other chord, I mean, number one, your hand has to know the muscle memory of the chord you're trying to transition to. I mean, that's primarily why I can, I can transition and not even look at my hand, right? But the years of, of knowing where to go. But when you're starting to do that, again, anchor point. Anchor point, anchor point, anchor point. Shoot for the anchor point, follow it up. Okay, so what that looks like in practicality, on the G, I know I'm anchoring at the highest string. Okay, I'm shooting for that with the right finger, shooting for that high string, and I'm just dropping my hand over. I say that like it's just easy, but I, you, <laughs> right, you drop over. When I'm going to transition to that C chord, I know that this finger goes on that second string's first fret, according to the sheet, right? That's what I'm shooting for. So, anchor, 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 anchor. Now, if you shoot for the anchor and then follow it up, you'll get faster and faster and faster. So, sometimes, like if you just have to G, C, G, G, C, G, C, or D, C, like back and forth, you shoot for the anchor. Don't, like at this stage in the game, don't try to get all those fingers to drop at the same time because they don't know the shape yet, right? Anchor it and then they'll drop. So that's how I transition. 
and remember if it's really hard and your hand can't get there. I've, I've, been, I've had the privilege of getting several new people into guitar this week. People coming in, wanting to learn guitar. It's been really fun. And I've been able to see all kinds of hand shapes and things going on with hands as to why or how their hand can or cannot, like if you're double jointed. I've never thought about the fact that your finger might just collapse, you know, trying to do a shape. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. That's, right? So, like, everybody has unique challenges. Um, but that doesn't mean you cannot play. There's a fantastic man who plays piano, world famous classical pianist, and he only has one hand. And he plays all over the world. Okay? There's a guy who plays guitar who doesn't have any hands, and he's incredible, and he plays with his feet. So, if you think you're struggling with your hands, try with your feet. That G's a lot harder. <laughs> so, so, the thing is, with your hand shape and where you're trying to go and try to transition, right? Like, eventually, you could probably put all of them down at the same time. But, but don't think about that. Shoot for the anchor and your hand will drop, and eventually you'll be there. So, just work on two chords. So, I've got five on this sheet, they're five very basic chords. Uh, they aren't all going to be in that favorite song, right? So pick your favorite song. It may not be Ring of Fire. Uh, it may be Another One Bites the Dust. I don't know what your jam is. Pick that song. Get those first two transitions down. Okay? So it doesn't matter to have the third transition down if you don't have the first one down, right? Like, uh, we can't get to, we can't get into falling into a burning ring of fire. If you don't have the first, right, you gotta have the first part down. So that point takes me to the tab conversation. Now, my goal, again, is to get you to have all the knowledge you need for self-teaching. Not discounting private lessons because they're really, really valuable. Uh, as you can see, some of the, you know, if you have struggles getting those fingers, I'm going to try to get you there. But sometimes booking a lesson once in a while is really going to help out. But if you're going to try to learn this song, well, there's a lot of things going on, right? And you're going to learn that with tablature, probably. But if you look at the tablature and you go, to take a step at a time in music is really, really, really important. Okay, so if, uh, if you don't have or whatever down, I don't think I can play the song slow. If you don't have the first part memorized here, why, why go on, right? You're going to spend just time I mean, you'll see it, and eventually it'll process. But when I've learned complicated songs, I always take a measure, and then the next measure, and the next measure, and I back up. And by the time you're done, you're so exhausted with hearing the song, you don't even want to hear it anymore. All right? But that's what it takes. And then eventually you're like, oh, yeah, I can play that. OK, so same with chords. It doesn't matter going all the way through that chord sheet and getting all the way through that song. That's not learning. That's just a lesson in futility. Get the first two transitions down, then move on, okay? And in getting the first transition down, you get the muscle memory so you can do it. And then it's kind of funny because eventually, like you just see me kind of once in a while, I get that wrong. Because if I don't do it as a performance, my brain can't even process it. I can't even think where I'm going half the time. Like my hand just does. I could not go halfway between that song and pick that up. It's just this thing that happened in muscle memory. And as any word of encouragement, we got music stands, we upgraded. Dang, we're getting pro. So, thank you, Caleb. So, uh, so I heard something there. Has anybody, does anyone know who Tommy Emmanuel is? 
If you don't know who Tommy Emmanuel is, uh, well, don't look him up. He'll make you want to quit guitar before you even get started. He's, he is incredible. He does things with guitar that most human beings can't do. You know, he's amazing. But he said something really interesting in an interview, and he said that like he's he's forgotten how to play a lot of the incredible songs that you might know that he plays. If you're a Tommy Emanuel follower or fan, uh, I guess it would be no different than if you're a big Paul McCartney fan and you and you you just love one of his songs, right? And he's like, oh, can you play? And he goes, I forgot how, right? Like, cause they're so hard. If you don't practice it every day, you're gonna forget. If you don't practice every week, you're gonna forget. I've had music teachers tell me. They would urge their students to do five to ten minutes a day, then 30 minutes to an hour once a week. Because the muscle memory is that important, okay? So in chord transitions, again, if you don't do it every day, your hand's going to just forget. And, uh, and even the best in the world forget. And that's okay, but moving on, this, getting that quick transition down, Taking a step at a time so you remember, 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 because muscle memory. So, in front of you, you've got several documents. Uh, on week two's sheet, you have kind of a map of what tablature is. Now, did anybody, like, actually look at that and try to comprehend that at all? You did. Did you have any success understanding it? All right, good. That's good. So, tablature is like sheet music, but it's sheet music for people that can't read sheet music, and it's kind of like a road map of a song. Now, the image from last week was kind of a dumbed down, quick way to see what's happening with the guitar and the tabs. This week, I've printed out three different documents because it can get very complicated. One is a reference for down the road. You've got, it almost looks like a ledger on a map with all these little things happening. That's because if you're looking up something on tablature that we hadn't covered in class, I don't want you to be lost, okay? If you see H on tablature, you're like, H? Wait a minute, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it repeats, that's not a note. No, it's not a note. An H is not in music, okay? Some jazz guys probably have an H. <laughs> But an H is not in music, okay? So what is an H? Well, I have it there, okay? So what is a S? What is a, what is this thing, okay? So in music, there's, there's a lot that happens. If you see, okay, that, that's a bend, and they, so when you see bend, Like, if you don't know how to go, you might go, you know, and you try to slide up. Well, a slide, that's something different, and it's written different. And a hammer on, you don't get your tool belt out, you hammer your finger on the string like this. Okay, you've all heard that. Those all mean something different, okay? So I'm telling you now so that you know that if you see something on these tabs that you look up, there's your roadmap. Because the people who write the tabs, sometimes they're just people who shoot it all out there. They don't have all the things to help you know what they think that it's supposed to be, right? It's kind of like, well, I mean, you should just know that a hammer-on's a hammer-on, a pull-off's a pull-off. Well, what's that, you know? things you've heard, and you're like, how do they do that? Okay, so on that tab sheet, that's your key, your key to tabs, and we're going to talk about what does that mean and why do I need to use that, and how can I take this home tomorrow and learn my favorite song? Okay, so, so the way tablature works, if you, if you look at um, the way it's laid out, is if you're looking at the music, it would be like you're looking at your guitar like this. That's what it's like, all right? And so if it says zero, that's an open string. Okay, so if you see any zero, that's 
that's the open string. So if we're looking at the music and we're like, okay, what am I looking at? And you see a zero on the third on the third line from you, that means it's the third line down is a open string. Alright? If you see two zeros together, maybe it's maybe it's the top two strings, right? Maybe you're looking and you're looking at the sheet, it's the top two and they're a zero. You see two zeros side by side. It's together you hit that, okay? If there's two notes, so here's how we read it. We read it in line. We're not trying to comprehend the whole thing, okay? So it's almost like if you could imagine this going over the sheet music and only showing you what's in line at a time. That's what we're concerned about. Read left or right, like regular music, it's telling you what to play. So in line now, if we go to sheet one of today's sheet, it should say week three on the top. Does everybody have that? Get on the same page with me. You don't have those sheets. Caleb, we need some sheets. Thank you. Who else needs a sheet? Can you bring me that top sheet too? All right, so on that sheet, this happens to be the intro for Ring of Fire, which is usually played on horn, uh, but it's fun to play it on guitar. And so the first thing that we see is a two on our A string. So everybody play that note on your guitar. Well, you, gotta, you put your guitar in your lap here, and we're going to play the second from the bottom string. And this is the note right here on the second fret. So everybody play that. Do you see where that's at on the sheet? Is anybody not understanding that or confused? Okay, do you see the two? Is everybody with me? On the sheet on ring on week three, the first thing it shows is on the A string, it shows a two. That means your second fret. We're gonna count up our frets, and that's the fret number is two. So I've got one, two. Okay, so this is just a road map. So the next thing this shows. What do you guys have there? Three. Let's do that then. Everyone play that. No, that's a great question. All right. That's a great question. Thank you. So, so in music, one of the things that I was taught, we're going to... So you got four fingers, right? A lot of people play guitar when they're beginning, like they have two fingers or one finger, right? Like that's, you have four fingers and even a lot of guitarists, you'll see them play with only three fingers. In fact, a lot of blues guys only use three fingers. They don't even, a lot of them won't even use their pinky. Um, so it's just a thing. Uh, a lot of jazz guys and classical guys are using all of them. So what I was taught is that you've got a finger for each fret, right? So if you're looking at tablature like this song, right? Well, we're not going past. What's the highest number you see on that chart? What? Seven. Three. Seven. Where? <laughs> oh, you're on the second line. I'm in the first line. It's a four. Right? Four frets. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that way, now, again, remember what I said, like your guitar should maybe fit your hand a little bit better? So if you're, I mean, you can imagine if you had a really long scale length and a really small hand, that's harder, and you have to shift your hand a little bit to do it. But if I keep my index finger on the one, 
right? I have one finger for each fret, and that actually makes it easier to look down at my music, or look up at my music if it's on a music stand, which I highly recommend, and go, okay, you see that sheet? Two, three, four. So it's in order, do you see how that sheet works? It's just, oh, first one's a two, next one's a three, next one's a four, and then what's it tell me to do? Open string on the D, which is your third string down, right? So we go. You with me? Who's not with me? You're not with me. Uh, Caleb, are you busy? Help, uh, let's explain that to anyone who might need a little help. We're on the cap sheet, two, three, four. Do you have the sheet out in front of you? Okay. Are you are you with me? Everybody with me? No. Okay. So so this sheet. You got your sheets out. When we're when we're looking at this from the far side. E A D G B. E, you got that? E, A, D, so you see the notes, E, A, D, G, B, E. Those are just the notes of these strings. It doesn't mean anything else. I should have clarified that, okay? It doesn't mean anything else except the note names of the string, E, A, D, G, B, E. Top down, E, A, D, G, B, E. So, on the A string, which is your second string, again, when you're looking at this, it's like we laid it down like this, and that is equal to my fretboard, okay? So we're just looking at the map of my fretboard, and I'm seeing on that right away, on that too, that's the second line up, which is my second string up. We'll go, okay, second string up. Two, that's the second fret. The three on it, that's the next note, which is the third fret, and the four is the next one up. So we go, we just read it left to right, in order for singular numbers like that. So we just take the first one, like we're looking through a little crack, and we go, first one's two, which is on the A string two. Second is, now we go to the three. So we don't have to worry about holding that two anymore. We just go to the three. And then we go to the four. And then a bunch of zeros in a row, right? Well, that's on that next string down, right? From the one that you've been playing. So you just hit that a bunch of times, right? Now, if you know the song, you kind of know what the pattern is, right? And so, then the next thing is, it's like, oh, now you hit a two on that D string. So that means it's the second fret. Now what did I say about starting from the beginning? Different level. Okay? 
I don't go for that when I'm trying to do tab. I'm, I'm trying to do it to memorize it. I'm not going to pull out my music. Okay. So that's when I'm saying like get it down. I, I want to. I want to memorize it, right? I don't. I don't plan on carrying my sheet music around. And if I had a campfire, I don't want to deal with sheet music unless I need kindling. So, so just you get that down. And once you have that down. What I want to point out, now that we've had that conversation, is what the next note is what? It's a three on the string down, right? So then you got that da 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 third fret. Okay. And so we just take this one note at a time until you get it down, okay? It's just the map of where you're going. If you seen two notes, one above the other, that would mean you play them together, right? It could be, it could be a zero on the low string and a two on the up string and they're together. Again, we're reading it in a line, okay? So, on your sheet, real quick, I want you to go, wow, that's a really bad printout. Gee, that's terrible. Who's teaching this class? <laughs> All right, I didn't print out the example. You might see a tab that's all the way down, there's numbers. Okay, it might be five, five, three, two, five. Five, whatever, right? It might be three, five, five, four, three, three, and that means you play them all together. Now, don't be intimidated by that. It's just showing you a chord shape, okay? So you've all learned chords, right? So think about your D, right? Well, if somebody threw that into tablature, it would just look like, probably, muting this string and going, Zero, zero, two, three, two on that sheet all the way down the line. I'd be like, zero, 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 two, three, two. That's a D, okay? You just play it all together. If you've seen three, two, zero, 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 three all in a line, don't be intimidated. That's the G shape. And eventually be like, oh, I know what those notes are. This happens in tablature. Okay, because there's really cool things, and I'm going to pick on dust in the wind. You hear that, like, right? What did we say about the finger style movements that we were doing? Right? Who practiced their finger style? All right, so I'm going, D, 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 D. I'm just repeating these three, right? That's all I'm doing. And on a tablature, it would say, it would look totally different. But you know what a chord looks like, so if you knew what the A minor chord looks like, you're like, wait a minute, he's just playing an A minor and he's good doing this. And he's pulling a finger off, like it's not that hard. So when you're looking at your tabs, the, one of the things you, you, you should, uh, and why I like practicing tabs and chords together, is that eventually you see the shapes of the songs that you want to play as the chords that you already know. And it makes it easier to recognize, which can also be the benefit of private lessons. You're like, hey, this is just a C chord, right? Because on tab, remember, they're going left to right. So if on the left, the first thing I'm doing is arpeggiating my G, meaning I'm playing each note individually, like we practice, right? Well, on tab, it's going to look like the first thing you're going to see is a three on the bottom string. And then the next thing you're going to see is an open D and then an open B and a three. And so you're going to be like, okay, three, open, open, uh, three, right? But if you notice it's that it's a G or, or that it can be done with a G shape, it might make it easier, okay? So that being said, when you're trying to learn songs, there's two things on Ultimate Guitar that happens. You can look up Johnny Cash's song, Ring of Fire, and you'll have the lyrics, and you'll have the chord names, G, C, D. 
okay? You can do that with almost every song, okay? Every song, it doesn't matter if it was played, um, like if I play Amazing Grace. Okay, now if I had to let you play that, it would be all tabbed out into what I did, right? All the individual notes I was playing. But there will be another version that's just G, G7, C, G, E minor, D, G. And that's all I can say, right? So if you're looking at tablature and you've got all the little dots and numbers, but you don't know the chords that go along with the song, you're going to have a harder time learning it. Okay? It's kind of like the chords, the chords are what the song is sitting on. Okay? It's the platform. Okay? I can play a G, and that is informing the melody that you're hearing. When I change to a C, it allows me to use other notes in the melody. Some are similar to this, some are different than this. So in music, that's the beauty. So when you hear like, oh, we're going to go to a jam, what's that even mean? That means I might play G for a while. So you can be informed to use the notes that go along with the G. All right, and if I switch to C, you can you can play the notes that go along with that. Okay, so in a jam, somebody's doing a foundational chord, and you might have Ring of Fire going, and everybody's and somebody might sing along, which is great. Uh, and then you, as as somebody who's showing up to jam, what might go. Right? And it's like, oh, it goes along, that's so cool. Because I'm going like. Right? Like, do you can see, do you see that? Like how that works? So in music, when we're looking at, and I'm telling you this because on Ultimate Guitar, has it has, does everybody have access to Ultimate Guitar in some form on a phone, iPad, computer? If you don't, let me just put it this, if you don't, if you're like younger and you don't have access to it, or older and don't want access to it. <laughs> uh, we do have books, in fact we have a great lesson book that has a video, it's got instruction, it takes you through how to read tab, step by step, baby steps from the, you know, easy stuff to, like it goes all the way through it and it shows you the chord forms, that it's, systematically helping you teach yourself. Now, we have teachers that teach that too, but I'm saying this lesson on tab is to inform you a little bit on what it is, and you could take that and you could go home and you could go learn your favorite lead part of whatever song you want to learn. So when you hear a five-year-old playing some lead riff that you've always wanted to learn, you're like, how did they learn that? Well, they're either a prodigy and it just came natural, or they looked it up on Ultimate Guitar Tabs. There's so many kids who come in and play. Right? They have no idea what they're playing. They just, they don't know. They don't know that that's, like they have no idea what that is. Okay? So, they wouldn't be able to solo to it and improv around it because they don't know those notes. They don't even know what they're playing. They just looked it up on a tab. And they're like, oh, and you go, we slide up on that string, on that number, and it sounds like that song. Got it, right? So, so there's learning traditional music, and if there's anybody who learned piano when they were young, you know what regular sheet music looks like. Or if you're in choir and you know what all the notes look like. Well, a lot of people who are playing guitar nowadays have no idea what the notes are. They couldn't tell you what note this is. 
None of them. They have no idea. Right? No idea. They would have no idea. Okay? So, there's a place for that. Private lessons will teach you that. Also, those lesson books I talked about will show you that if you're really interested in that. But uh, what I'm trying to do is give you tools to learn your favorite songs yourself at home and tell you it's not that hard. Okay? I know because I've learned some songs and I have no idea what I'm playing. I'm <laughs> like, these are just the shapes that go along with whatever. And then later I kind of figure it out. Okay? So, uh, if you feel like you're in over your head, raise your hand. All right, we'll, work, we'll have a private session. Is there a free version of the album? I downloaded it, but it's like, it costs money. Is there some... I think if you... Well, yeah, if you just there bypass the, them asking for money, it'll be free. But they keep okay. asking you. And they keep asking. And yeah, so it's like I couldn't get to the... I pressing. download that, but then I'm like... Is it $2.99 a month? Just keep pressing X. No, it's like $10 a month. Good advice. $10 a month? So you got it. Or you can... You got it to work. Yeah, or it's just something. It's just There are certain tabs that are blocked. Yeah. Yeah, they always want to make sure you have the option. Uh, I think on the computer it's free. I was just on my computer downloading a couple and there was nobody asked me for anything. It was just boom. It's not as actually it's not as easy and intuitive as I think the app, like because it's the way they have the tab and the chord that it's not in the same format. But and that being said, I think the computer version is free, plus you have a bigger screen, but uh, I digress. That's a great way to learn, okay? So, when you see all the chords together, all the numbers together on your tab, that's just a chord, all right? When you're seeing, like, this song, do, 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 that, that's not a chord, we're not playing a chord, and that can't be done in a chord form, right? Because the notes are in line coming up the neck. Okay, but sometimes when you see those numbers hopping around on these strings up and down, it seems really intimidating. 90% of the time, I would bet that whoever wrote that used a chord shape and they just pulled notes from the chord, like the G that you learned and you went. Right, like think about unchained melodies for those of who are older, right? You can do that with a chord shape. Those aren't individual thoughts. Those are chord shapes. Okay? So, so is everybody along that ride right there? Everybody got to understand that. Okay? I took a little bit of time, but I just need you to understand tab. As you learn tab, there's images that you have no idea what it means. You've got a sheet for that. Listening to the real song helps you inform right like what you're hearing if you're hearing this that's a bend okay and when they so on your sheet that looks like the week two i've got this bottom thing down here and you see uh you see two to four with an h in between now that's on the g string which is our fourth string down and we're going two and then four now remember what I said about one finger for every string, okay? So everybody put your finger on that G string on the second fret. Everybody. Find that note. And then, and then make sure you move your finger up close to that fret. Like right, there you go, good job. Try to play that note. Ever got it? Now, when you see an H, that's a hammer on. And it says we're going to the fourth fret. Okay? Which means we take our hand with our, remember, a finger for each string, which means we're going to hit that next note with that finger, right? Because we've got a finger for each fret. And we're going to. And the stronger and more accurate your fingers get, you get that. So everybody just try that for a minute. And so you don't hit the string twice. <laughs> so this is called the hammer on. And some
some of you won't be able to do it. Yet, because your fingers aren't strong and accurate to get that note. Now, if I don't use any input from my right hand, see how I can make the note? I'm just, I'm hitting the string so hard, it's making a sound. Okay? That's how when you see people and you see something that you really want to learn and it's using hammer-ons and, and pull-offs, you're they're just right, they're hammering on. And with the act of hitting the string hard creates a sound. On an electric guitar, they get so like amplified, like some of you are having a hard time maybe getting a good clean sound. Well if I turn my guitar up. I don't have to hit it very hard at all. You can hear it a lot, right? So, right, so I got an electric. I can do all kinds of stuff. That you can hear because it's amplified. Okay. So some of the things that you're seeing at home on your favorite videos of players that you might want to play, songs you want to play, I just want you to keep in mind, like, oh, maybe I can hear what he's doing on that tab because he's playing an electric. So, for any spouses out there wondering why we have so many guitars, like, there's things you can't do on every guitar, right? I tell people, there's more than 12 types of music. Like, what do you mean I can't have more than six guitars, you know? So, like, that, that act of hammering on, pulling off on tab is really important. Because, okay, say, so that's a hammer on. A pull off is when your finger's on the string. So I want everybody to put your finger on the bottom on that E string, okay? E string, bottom, third fret, we're gonna be on the G shape. But I only want you to put your ring finger there. Everyone let me know when you're in. Now, are you holding it nice and like you got a good clean sound? Okay, now here's what I want you to do. We're not going to make any sounds with our right. I want you to keep holding it and when you let go, I want you to let go at a 45 degree angle to the string. Brilliant! You guys are naturals. You see what happened? That's a pull off. Incredible. Why? Watch. So now let's play the note, everyone together. And now you pull off. Right, it's pretty cool. Hammer on some pull off. Okay? So, Marcus, why do I want to know that? I just want to play chords. I don't want to be a solo player. This isn't about being a solo player. Okay? So everybody remember Tom Petty's free, is it free falling? Watch my pinky. I can, I could, I could do that. Now, I do it as a strum, but I follow it with the strum because that's the chord. This is but if I go, that's cool, but I like it when I go. You hear the difference? And then I pull off that pinky. Okay, so there's certain things in music that I can take, and if we looked at that D shape, get into the D shape and we're going to go down the D shape. So everyone do. Everyone try to get into that shape. So once you hit that last note, put your pinky down. On the high string third fret. Be able to do 
do it because your pinky may not be strong enough, right? But if the music says, uh, you know, an H on that note, that's what it's talking about. So I'm just putting my pinky down on the third fret. And you stay in the D shape, though. Stay in the D shape. So play your D chord. And then put your pinky down. practice at home but the point isn't that you nail this D idea the point is that you understand when you're looking at a P or an H what that means there's techniques with our left and our right hand what we just did is we're trying to combine an arpeggio that we did right we were practicing this right yourself wanting to learn something that is a, you know, you're like, you want to learn that? Well, you probably need to get taps down really good, you know, so if that's where you want to go with your guitar playing, taps is a great way to do it. Get the resource for it if you if you can, or, or get private lessons, but they'll have you buy it. Um, if, you, if you just want to be a strummer, pretty much forget everything I told you. <laughs> All right? But, but if you look up a tab, the problem is sometimes if you've got some kind of a, a different style that you like that maybe isn't mainstream, some people put the song, like the only source that you're going to find that song is might be somebody who wrote the chords out in tab form. So you've got all of these 0, 0, 0, 2, 2, 0. And you're like, oh. You know, and you wish somebody would tell you it was an E minor, but it's not out there, right? So, so having those understanding of tablature kind of helps when you're trying to find your favorite songs, all right? If you just want to play chords and sit along and strum at the campfire, it's still nice to know that if you heard how you get that sound. And you can take your chords that you learned last week and the week before, and the chords that are in front of you, or the chords of your favorite songs, and you 
And along with that muscle memory that you're talking about of transitioning, like the same muscle memory has to exist for the hammer on, right? And so it's a really neat way to, we call it embellishing. We take something that's basic and we make it more beautiful, okay? I take a basic D and I make it more beautiful. Or I take a basic arpeggiated D and I pull off the note before I transition to my G. Okay? That is, that is, it, for those of you who are only learning to strum, that's why we do hammer-ons and pull-offs. And just, I always encourage people to experiment once you really know a shape. See what you can do with it in that hand position. If I put my pinky down on this other string, oh, that sounds pretty cool. If I pull off that string, this is a B string. There's all those notes. I just changed the key of dust in the wind. Or did I? No, I did. I was an A minor to C. That was funny. So right, I'm just like moving that note, trying to figure out what sounds good with it. And a lot of songwriters do that. So if you want to be a songwriter, sometimes you're like, well, what can I do? Right to make that note. So I'm in the D shape, and now you can't do this right now because you're beginning players. But. Yeah. I just did a whole bunch with a D, and it's really, really cool. Grand Funk Railroad wrote a whole song around that. For any of, anybody who knows who they are, like that's the whole intro, basically. It's hammer on the lot. The whole time. And you hear that in music a lot. So now that you've heard that, you're going to know exactly what it is. All right? So that's the session. If anyone needs extra help, raise your hand real high and we'll get to you. Anyone have questions before we go? My signature for this example of the intro, is that 4-4 four, four, is it 6 four? It's 4-4, four, four. yes. And, uh, yeah, 4-4. Four, four. So meaning, meaning every, it's got four beats in a measure, quarter note gets one beat for the last year of music. Yeah, all right, thanks guys.